Chairman Miller and Ranking <clears throat> Member McKeon. Thank you for convening this first full committee hearing of the 111th uh, Congress. Um, by, by, by this pioneering committee and for your fine opening statements. And I appreciate the excellent work Representative McCarthy and Representative Platts did on national service in the subcommittee on healthy families and communities. Now my grandsons hearing that I was going to be on a panel with Usher came to life and said, that's really cool. <laughs> I'm happy to be here with all these cool panelists. Rick, I'm sorry I missed the Constitutional Convention <laughs> of 1787, but I, I think 2009 is going to be a very good year, thanks in part to your cover stories and the summit you helped convene. But at that summit, when both presidential candidates, Obama and McCain, supported a quantum leap in national service and became co-sponsors of the Serve America Act that day, introduced in the Senate by Senators Ted Kennedy and Orrin Hatch, the networks, following their habit of treating good news as no good news, um, announced that the two candidates had agreed on national service, so there was no news coming from the summit. Well, last night, in his address to Congress, President Obama made news on a number of fronts, not the least on the front of citizen service. Now is the time to act boldly and wisely, he said. And he asked Congress to enact the Kennedy-Hatch bill. That bill is a companion and corollary of the good act, which we are most immediately considering today. I hope that this pace-setting hearing will in due course lead to the great good news of bipartisan enactment of comprehensive legislation that expands greatly the opportunities for all Americans to serve. Now this week I just returned from India with a congressional delegation led by John Lewis and Spencer Bacchus joined by Martin Luther King III. We retraced the trip made 50 years ago by Martin Luther King Jr., which I had helped arrange long ago. King was a man of service who said, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, those of us here in support of the GIVE Act are trying to practice what Dr. King prescribed. We hope that in the same spirit, you will recommend legislation to encourage and enable anyone at any age to serve. Let me tell one other story of long ago. Soon after President Kennedy's death, my wife and I, then living in Ethiopia, where I was Peace Corps director and representative for Africa, were invited to Israel. We put at the top of our list a meeting with the great philosopher Martin Buber. In our conversation with him, I cited a passage from his book, Paths in Utopia, in which he said that though his dream of Israel and Palestine cooperation and Arab-Jewish brotherhood had been plowed under by events, a great idea will return when idea and fate meet once more in a creative hour. When I asked Buber if he saw signs of that hour coming soon, Claire guffawed and said that from what she saw, it would be a long time coming. As we parted, Buber said to me that I was obviously a romantic and he hoped I knew how lucky I was to be married to a realist. And to Claire, he said, you are right that these creative hours when idea and fate meet come only rarely after long intervals but they do come, and once one comes, I hope your realism will not make you miss it. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, the crisis in our economy, the world's economy, and the conditions in the world, and the call to action by the President of the United States tell me that such a creative hour is at hand. This is a time when this committee can do its part to see that Congress and the country do not miss the opportunity. It, it won't surprise you, Mr. Chairman, that I support all the key parts of the GIVE Act, including AmeriCorps, Learn and Serve America, and the Senior Corps. But today, at nearly four score and three years of age, I'm here particularly on behalf of the Experience Wave, a campaign supported by the Atlantic Philanthropies to advance state and federal policies to tap the reservoir of talent, time, and skill of the boomer generation and encourage all older adults to be engaged in work for the common good, in civic life, and in service. 
Unfortunately, many people and pundits view the coming population of older Americans as a threat and a burden. Instead, we need to see them, first of all, as an asset of tremendous potential, a great force for the common good, and they need to see themselves in that light. The three programs of the Senior Corps of the Corporation for National and Community Service, Foster Grandparents, Senior Companions, and the Retired Senior Volunteer Pro Program, RSVP, together tap the talents of more than half a million Ameri older Americans each year. All three programs have done great work for many years, which I saw firsthand as CEO of the corporation. Those programs provide good ways for seniors to contribute and make a real difference for the individuals involved and for nonprofits, faith-based, and other community organizations throughout the United States. They should be expanded, as should the newer Experience Corps. To crack the atom of citizen service, and release its full potential. We need to recognize that citizen service is ageless and that it can creatively connect the generations. The experience wave of older Amer Americans is coming. In 2006, the first of the 77 million boomers turned 60. The wave has begun. The boomers represent the most active, healthy, and educated retiring generation in history. For example, the New Experience Corps members are a diverse group. Aging range from 50 to 87. Their income and education, a wide range as well. Over half are African American, 39% white. In addition to delivering valuable help to others, those older adults in the Senior Corps and the Experience Corps can improve their own lives by service. Findings in two studies of Experience Corps members by Washington University and Johns Hopkins show a sustained increase in civic activity, uh, in greater public support for public education, in a wider circle of friends, and a better. Senator, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask if you can if you so can wrap I, it up. So uh, I will submit the rest of Thank my you. Uh, testimony of a page and a half into the record, um, and I, I would like to uh, put into the record this set of papers that my written report. Thank you. And uh, do I have a chance uh, to introduce? Uh, uh, no, I'll tell you why, because we're going we're to have a problem with a vote here in a few minutes.